Tonight, Amazon Unlimited is officially launched. The Chrome browser could be zapping your battery life. What's all the fuss over Airbnb's new logo? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 132 for Friday, July 18th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like coconut date energy bites. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Jason Howell. Let's uh, waste no time. Get right to the tech feed. Let's do it. The European Union checked in on Google and Apple to track each company's progress as they implement ways to prevent unintended purchases in their app stores. The EU says that Google has done a good job addressing those concerns as the company plans to implement changes starting September that will further improve the situation. Things like listing an app that doesn't charge for the download but still offers in-app purchases as something other than free on the Play Store. Apple, on the other hand, was given a wag of the finger, with the EU stating that the company hasn't offered adequate protection to the problem, something that can result in situations where, for instance, children rack up thousands of dollars of in-app purchases on their parents' dime, among other costly actions. Apple responded to the EU's dour analysis by stating that its creation of a kids section, as well as clearly listing that an app has in-app purchases, go above and beyond its industry rivals. Anyone with a device running Google's Chrome OS may be able to look forward to a refresh of the user experience sometime in the near future, according to Francois Buffo, uh, Chromium evangelist at Google. He posted a screenshot of a completely revamped Chrome OS, codenamed Athena, that brings the look of Android's stacked cards interface to the OS with bookmarks that line the bottom of the screen. And Buffo gave instructions on how users can check out its progress by compiling the source code for themselves. This follows previous reports that shared other details of the Athena project, including things like an on-screen keyboard, touch gestures, and a split-screen mode. And if you've ever noticed that your battery life suffered on your Windows machine, it's very possible that the Chrome browser could have been the culprit. Forbes contributor Eden Morris noticed a battery drain issue with Chrome for Windows, where Chrome would would refuse to be idle when not in use, running the processor unnecessarily and draining the battery. Google has stated that the bug is now assigned and the Chrome team is working on a fix. China's Baidu, the search engine mostly unheard of on this side of the world, kicks off in Brazil today. Get it? Kicking? Soccer? Sorry about that. Uh, Baidu holds a 60% share in China, and thank you very much, and also launched in Japan, where Google and Yahoo are dominant. The Portuguese language version will target Brazil's 200 million citizens, where Google currently holds a 98% share of search, according to internet marketing firm Return On Now. Baidu plans on setting up a research center in the country and wants to partner with local universities, a spokesman said. The company hopes to become a household name, which is unique among China. Chinese internet firms and also intends to launch in Thailand and Egypt next month. It was just a week ago that Lyft received a cease and desist order on the day the company planned to launch in New York City. Well, today, New York Supreme Court Judge Catherine Freed ordered Lyft and the Taxi and Limousine Commission to work out an agreement. Lyft spokes, uh, spokeswoman Aaron Simpson said, quote, we will continue to collaborate with all parties on a path forward for Lyft in New York. Now, Lyft has agreed to figure out a way to operate under the current TLC rules, so we'll see. There is no launch date set, yet it looks like there is a good chance you will see those fuzzy pink mustaches on cars in Brooklyn and Queens. And coming up, is a one-word app worth any money? Why, some investors believe so, and how much Yo has raised. And next, I'll chat with Harrison Weber from VentureBeat about Amazon Unlimited and on a story he broke on Airbnb's rebranding. But first... I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you a little bit. You should be snacking more. Yes, you need to be snacking more. Why? Well, I've discovered NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And here's how it works. It's super simple. You click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options. Then you place your order. And once you're a member, 
You can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs, vegan, soy-free, gluten-conscious, uh, lactose-free, nut-free, non-GMO. You can also select by taste, savory, sweet, or maybe spicy is your thing. The next time you get cranky, and hungry and you're ready to eat anything remember nature box you can snack guilt-free with coconut date energy bites santa fe corn sticks pear praline crunch uh roasted garlic pumpkin seeds right here uh over a hundred more healthy choices on tap to get 50 percent off your first box go to naturebox.com slash twit stay full stay strong go to naturebox.com slash twit and we thank nature box for their support of tech news tonight all right, I want to welcome to the show Harrison Weber, news editor at VentureBeat. It's good to have you back, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. From Zimbabwe, of all places, you are up late in the morning for this appearance, and we appreciate it. Or early in the morning, late in the night, however you want to interpret that. Uh, so first up, you wrote about Amazon's new all-you-can-read ebook service. That's Kindle Unlimited. And before it was legit, Amazon did everyone a solid by leaking the info through its own site. But now that it's official, uh, Harrison, why don't you tell us what we need to know about the service right now? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. $10 a month, uh, 600,000 books, uh, thousands of audiobooks, they say. They didn't say how many exactly. Uh, it's unfortunately U.S. only. Uh, but that's pretty par for the course for uh, a Amazon subscription service release. Okay, so it's a kind of a, a limited catalog, and we're not going. You know, is it there the possibility that this is going to open up sometime in the near term, or what? Do you, what is your house? Yeah, so so um, you know, I mean, I think six six hundred thousand books is a pretty good number, uh, but it just you know just depends on if they have the the big sellers. I know they have. Some of the biggest ones, I mean, Amazon can secure some of the best deals. They can also piss off, uh, if I can say that, sorry, sure. uh, the, the <laughs> biggest publishers. Uh, and, and they're famous for, for angering publishers. Um, and so two other uh, competing services, Scribed and Oyster, uh, both kind of release, you know, somewhat passive responses to this. Uh, they both have smaller catalogs. But um, I think optimistically... We could see something like a Hulu Netflix situation where people would subscribe to both if sure. maybe they wanted, you know, access all the books they wanted. Right, right, right. Now, you also have been following another story. You broke this and covered at length this week. Airbnb redesigned their logo. Uh, four days ago, you published a story about the rebranding. And now that the logo is out, it's getting a lot of comments. Many people have compared it to uh, body parts. And today you posted a story on how some top designers see this redesign what was their take both on the logo and on all the controversy surrounding it yeah so first the controversy uh obviously the curvaceous logo <laughs> uh has drawn some controversy yeah. i mean it was just watching people react was hilarious uh i i didn't spend too much time talking about its relation to to body parts i mean it's it's obvious for many people uh once pointed out you can never unsee it uh <laughs> But and also it looks a lot like the logo of a similar company or not a similar company, a similar logo for a different company called Automation Anywhere. And quickly they released a statement about how uh, Automation Anywhere, the company with a similar logo, is, is changing its logo. So maybe they got paid off real quick. Um, I have no idea about that. Uh, some top designers have uh, really kind of praised it. Um, Daniel Burka at, at uh, Google Ventures uh, likened it to iPad's launch. When, when iPad launched, everyone... Uh, poked fun at the name. Uh, and actually, funny enough, I think SNL or Mad TV had a skit about an iPad product years before the iPad launched, a feminine hygiene product from Apple. Mm -hmm. And yet now everyone forgot iPad was huge, uh, giant success for, for Apple. Um, my take is that people will just kind of forget about this. Um, obviously, what matters the most is how users see it. I think it's a clean, uh, clean mark. I think what might not happen, though, is, is it could be a stretch for Airbnb to say that this is the new symbol, the new global symbol for belonging, which is what they want. Um, that's going to be tough to, to create a, a symbol for the movement. But as a logo, they can, they'll can they probably pull this off in the end, even if they're a bit embarrassed now. Yeah, another good example of that was the Nintendo Wii. I remember when the Wii came out, everyone made fun of it and were like, oh, man, what a horrible name and all the different directions you can go in. And maybe it's still a bad name just as that as an example, but people got used to it. And at a certain point, it just became the thing. So um, now, do you think that uh, there was any sort of, <laughs> I, I doubt this to be true, but uh, any sort of intention on Airbnb's part to make this uh, somewhat 
kind of I don't I don't know kind of a controversial topic or are they rolling with the punches are they doing a good job handling this publicity do you think uh they're staying pretty quiet uh they're yeah. kind of just they've gone dark with me and a few other people that I know sure. uh, in terms of questions about this uh that's not surprising at all uh Sasha Grief uh co-founder of a uh, few few uh services including Telescope and Sidebar uh he's a, a well known in the design industry and and he said he thought it was intentional and that you know uh, to quote him i think i'm reading now uh mother a uh, mother's womb is the ultimate symbol of a safe warm and welcoming place uh <laughs> that might be a stretch yeah but, maybe a little bit but but um some remarks from from airbnb's marketing team have suggested that like the curves are meant to be welcoming um that they 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 do think it it they did realize that it, it somewhat relates to a kind of like the 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 iconic kind of female form. Mm -hmm. uh, so who knows? I mean, they're kind of rolling with the punches, though. At an event, Recode reported um, one of the co-founders of Airbnb said, go ahead and laugh. Uh, so I think that they are going to wait and see. Um, you know, I, again, like I said, it's not going to be a long-term problem in, in my eyes. Probably not. And I think the, the, these designers kind of pointed that out. You know, I, I would trust their opinions over over maybe just, you know, someone who who isn't a famous designer. Right. And it has everybody talking. No publicity is bad publicity necessarily. I mean, sure, there's some such thing as bad publicity, but everybody's talking about it. It's not a deal breaker, I wouldn't imagine. So I, I, I think I agree with you there. Uh, Harrison Weber, really appreciate you coming on and, and talking about these two stories. Where can people follow your work online? Yeah, follow me on VentureBeat.com and at Harrison Weber on Twitter. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, get to sleep now. I think it's like 1, 1 a.m. Yeah. for you. So, Yes, it is. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Take care, sir. All right. Now, finally, do you remember Yo? It's the messaging app that launched in April that allows users to do nothing but send their friends a push notification that says, you guessed it, Yo, and nothing more. Well, it turns out that one trick pony is worth some money. With more than 2 million downloads, the company has secured a $1.5 million seed round with a 5 to $10 million valuation. China's Tencent, Mashable founder Keith, uh, Pete Cashmore, and Betaworks are among the few investors. John Borthwick of Betaworks envisions an app that pushes the boundaries of, perhaps, what could be a new notification system, stating that the notification layer is untapped territory and ripe for innovation. And, I mean, let's face it. Yo can mean a lot of things. It could mean yo or yo or even yo. See? That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.